Hello, it's Elder here, and today I wanted to go ahead and review the Stinger Cold Therapy Massage Rollerball made by a company called Recoup Fitness. Uh, here at Natural Training Center, we spend a lot of time in the field and also some tough workouts. And one of the crucial components of our NTC method is to be able to restore ourselves uh, using different methods. And one of those is self-myofascial release uh, using balls like this and foam rollers and other types of gadgets. Uh, those of you that are not familiar with uh, self-myofascial release and uh, utilizing that to restore your body, I'll get into a little bit of detail and give you my layperson explanation. Those of you that aren't too familiar with uh, self-myofascial release, you've probably seen these uh, devices laying around your chiropractic office or physical therapist, uh, the gym, uh, things of that nature. And all of these aid, they have different purposes, but especially the foam roller and this other massage roller here all aid with self-myofascial release. So while we're out in the field hiking, uh, backpacking, working on all sorts of different activities, uh, we're, our bodies are taking a toll and we need to restore our bodies. Things get tight, uh, connective tissue gets out of whack, and uh, think about it uh, the way that we would approach having to go to a masseuse or a chiropractor or physical therapy to basically work out these knots and get rid of that tightness. What we're doing with self-myofascial release is trying to uh, get rid of those symptoms ourselves or uh, taking care and alleviating that, uh, that stress or those knots that are on the body and that tightness by using various devices. Uh, and this uh, Stinger roller here is uh, definitely something that uh, I'm happy with. I'm glad that I got to review it because it's something that I have been implementing into my own restoration and it's uh, been working out pretty well. I suggest in the beginning starting out with these foam rollers. Uh, they're uh, bigger, uh, bigger surface area, less pressure on the body. As you begin to get comfortable uh, with self-myofascial release, we start getting smaller and smaller and getting into uh, balls and, and uh, other smaller devices all the way down to baseballs and, and tennis balls and even golf balls. And that's why this is a pretty good size as far as the stinger roller. So what this does is it comes in a little bit of a uh, little housing here so that you can keep it together if you just want to work out certain things on the body and just get a slight pressure release with that. Uh, also, it stays stationary, so that if you are rolling on top of it, the ball goes ahead and rolls. But what I like to do is to actually open up the housing, take out the ball, and utilize the ball by itself uh, for the, uh, the self-myofascial release. Now, you can tell this uh, Stinger Roller Ball here has condensation on it, and that's because I froze it. It's one of its features, so I wanted to go ahead and uh, test that out for this review and basically just uh, put it in the freezer for a couple hours, stays cold up to six hours. Now it's been out of the fridge already for about four hours today, and it's still uh, pretty, pretty cold. All right, so for those of you that uh, enjoy the extra cold while you're doing your self-myofascial release and also using it for compression and rice method and things of that nature, pretty cool feature that's built, built right into this uh, Stinger Rollerball. So keep in mind that uh, our bodies are all different sizes and shapes, so you gotta find what works for you. And that's why it's always good to have an assortment of different type of rollers because uh, different muscle groups and uh, different areas that you're trying to get into, you might not be able to get into with uh, bigger, uh, or, uh, bigger type of balls like this medicine ball here or this other roller or even the foam roller. So as you start getting different sizes to better allocate that space that you're trying to work, uh, just something to keep in mind. And remember, this does get painful, so you always want to exhale through the movements and uh, make sure that you're not putting too much pressure and just gradual, just like everything else that I preach about, um, baby steps will always get you there the fastest. All right, so little by little, ease into it. Think about uh, having dough and the dough is all clotted up into knots, so on and so forth, and you're going ahead getting that rolling pin and rolling it out. That's very similar to what we're thinking about here while we're trying to get that release uh, with these type of devices. So I just wanted to give a quick overview here on uh, self-myofascial. This was more of a review, not a tutorial. There's a lot of great information out there. Uh, get out there with a good coach and uh, learn more and discover more about self-myofascial. Uh, once again, there's always two sides of the fence. One side swears by it. The other side says that uh, there's no science in this and it doesn't work, so on and so forth. Just like everything else, give it a try. If it works for you and it makes you feel better, continue doing it. If you feel like it's doing nothing for you, then go ahead and stop. So, uh, you know, stop listening to other people's opinion uh, because that might be something that doesn't get you where you need to be as far as goal-wise. So always try stuff out for yourself, uh, especially when there's very little negative impact as long as you're doing things correctly. 
Uh, and that's why it's important to learn what you're doing. Don't just get out there, get one of these devices, start bouncing around on it, and then you end up getting hurt. All right, so that's something that you definitely wanna be careful about just like any other thing, especially when it pertains to your body. This is Helder, I hope that you enjoyed this review.